Hello everyone and welcome back to more Umi Neko. So in the last video we are still following the family on their trip to the island but Maria had sort of a funny turn and it became a very very foreboding scene. It seems to have been rescued though by George as always. Nice guy George. Maria jumped into George and Iki's arms and hugged him tightly. After Aniki patted her head, she jumped away again. Her facial expression had undergone a 180 degree change, turning back to normal. She was once again the ordinary, ordinary Maria. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> the harbour was already drawing near. The boat gave a big shudder. Seems we've docked at the harbour. The boat driver came out and jumped to the pier with the mooring rope. A large man in a tuxedo was waiting there for us with a warm smile. I didn't recognise his face, but judging by his clothes, I guessed he was a servant of the Yashirimiya head household. <laughs> At this rate, word will spread to the whole family and I'll be the big conversation piece during dinner. Even without this, everyone would be talking about me because of that six year gap. But now I've given them an even juicier topic. Damn it, why does the Ashiromiya head family have to live on this isolated island? In the meantime, the boat had finished its mooring. A small plank was lowered so that we could get down. One by one, our parents came up from inside the boat. おかげさまで毎日元気にお勤めをさせていただいております。バトラ君はゴーダさんとは初対面じゃない確か6年前はお勤めじゃなかったですよね。はい。ですのでバトラ様とは初めてご挨拶させていただきます。初めましてバトラ
but he was much more polite than my first impression had led me to believe. He claimed to have served on the island for two years, but he had doubtless worked at a similar job somewhere before. After everybody disembarked, the mooring rope was untied and the boat started to steer away from the harbour. It was probably returning to its home port on Nijima. The captain waved his hand in farewell. Maria conscientiously waved her hand back. Mm. Probably quite a lot is out of place, <laughs> um, considering you haven't been here for six years. If I remember correctly, whenever we came to this island in the past, the seagulls always greeted us with their lively nya nya cries. Because of that, whenever I heard the cries of seagulls anywhere else, I get the feeling that I'm coming to a family conference. Except for the small part of the island where those of the Ashiromiya head family live. Rokenjima has been left uncultivated, which apparently makes it a paradise for wild birds. Supposedly, there was a cliff somewhere that housed a huge seagull colony, so this island was always full of seagulls. Not having those seagulls here to greet us made me feel a bit lonely. どうしたの、なんだってこうも Swimming meat dolls. I don't think that's quite what he said. Now she seems quite happy about the fact that Jessica ate them. As I made fun of Jessica, Maria tagged along, looking like she was having fun. Oh, I never guessed she was such a good sport. Alrighty then, from today on I'll make you my number one follower. As I smiled at her, she beamed, looking overjoyed, possibly because she was happy about this little connection we'd made with each other. As they probably left because of the impending typhoon.天気が崩れそうだしね。末、早めに引き上げてるのかもしれないね。ふう、焼き鳥じゃない。シシカお姉ちゃんが焼き鳥にしたんじゃない。違う違う。私はそんなことしないって。ほら、バトラム嘘だ
そうよ明日以降天気が良くなったらきっと戻ってきてニャーニャーと声を聞かせてくれるわうん天気良くなって戻ってくるの待つ明日まで待つ It's kind of funny for me because in the UK we, we don't like seagulls. We don't want them to be around, but they're actually all pretty excited about it. Maria was in a lighter mood and was looking forward to tomorrow when the seagulls would come back and fill the skies. Still, George Aniki really was amazing at taking care of kids. I think I remember Aniki taking good care of me as well when I was a brat six years ago. Aniki, that's probably your gift. まさか。保育士さんは立派なお仕事だよ単なる子供好き程度に勤まる仕事じゃないね<笑>本当にジョージ君は謙虚ねでもバトラ君も子供のあやし方が上手よさっきはほんの少しの間だけどマリアとっても楽しそうだったこれからも今みたいに遊んであげてね冗談は選んでだけどね Aunt Rosa winked at me, giggling a little. She's a real mother, I thought to myself, who's happy to see Maria having fun. Oi, Rosa! Sorry, I'm going to go. What are you doing? I'm going to go. And then in comparison, we have Rudolph, who is calling all the children brats. Hi, hi! I'm going to go. The old bastard was waving for us to hurry up. Yeah, we need to get moving. We might as well have had this conversation after setting our luggage down in our rooms. So, let's go to the guest house. I'm going to go to the guest house. Let's go. Goda san called to everyone and led the way. Kumasawa san brought up the rear. A serpentine twisting path led through a dim forest. It ran a bit uphill. I guess the path was made all twisty so the slope wouldn't seem too steep. But personally, I'd have been happier if they'd had the guts to make some stairs in a straight line. No doubt they made the path twist on purpose to put on airs of distance and importance. Before long, we saw garden style stone steps. Ah, from here on, I do have some memories. Go up these and. At the top of the stone steps, we saw a beautiful guest house. Its facade was lovely, of course, but more importantly, we couldn't enter its doors without having our hearts stolen away by the splendour of the beautiful rose garden spread before it. It is quite pretty. Oh, okay, that's much nicer. <laughs> After climbing the stone steps, the people greeted by this rose garden gave voice to their impressions one by one. Kotoshiwaskoshihananigenkiganoinjana?やっぱり夏があまり暑くなかった成果しろ。その性もあるかと思います。去年の先に比べると、今年は少々見劣るのが残念です。I don't know, that's still a beautiful rose garden, I have to say. Much better than a lot of the ones that I've seen. Even so, it was a delightful rose garden. I remember that even six years ago, huge numbers of roses had greeted us every year. This rose garden was the first thing that greeted the people who came to Rokinjima. Even our parents, who came every year, couldn't help but give voice to their admiration. In fact, it seemed to have undergone a power up from the garden in my memories of six years ago. So, 
I'm, I'm sorry, but they're all rich. They could hire a professional gardener if they really wanted a rose garden. え、そういう話かよ。たく。ローザ、I can't help but feel that this must all be quite uncomfortable conversation for Battler. <笑>物騒なお話ですね。モテる男はいつもリスクと隣り合わせなんや。わしも来世じゃもうちょい美形に生まれたいもんやで。だから秀吉兄さん、モテてなんかない。<笑> キリエもほら、マリアちゃん、来てごらん。こっちのバラは特に立派だよ。バラが立派。うーん。かぐわしい匂いだぜ。俺のエレガントさにぴったりだな。おい、よせよ。<笑> She yelled at me as I leaned in to smell the rose's scent with an exaggerated gesture. I thought she was overreacting, but when I turned around I saw Maria imitating my every gesture and Georgianiki smiling broadly at us. It seems she, um, she very much likes to imitate everything she sees. She's very impressionable. Maria pointed at a single rose. I immediately understood why she found it odd. In the midst of all the, these magnificent roses, one single rose was just starting to wilt. There wasn't any particular reason. Some roses flourish and others wilt. That's all there was to it, but Maria seemed very concerned about the only unhealthy one in the group. It must have made her feel lonely. It seemed that Maria's pure, sensitive nature was making her feel some emotional pain for the rose that wilted alone. Even though she understood the logic of it, it still felt lonely to her. George and Niki straightened up and felt around in his pocket. He then took out the wrapper from the candy he had been sucking on the plane. He twisted it into a thin string, then gently tied it to the rose as a sort of marker. Does it really need a marker if it's the only rose that's wilting? They'd be able to tell which one it was. I apologize that I'm accidentally skipping some of the dialogue. It's hard to tell when they finish speaking, because obviously I don't speak Japanese. 
Though she still wore her usual sullen face, Maria crossed her arms and began to consider this intently. At the very least, she appeared to have been completely pulled out of her slump. Nice going, Aniki. ジョージ兄さんって昔から包容力があるよな。尊敬するぜ。だな。人徳ってやつだろ。後で爪の赤をもらってきてやるから一緒に飲もうぜ。この庭園はお前が子供の頃にもこんなに立派だったんか私が出
as though wondering whether or not it was a question he'd have to answer. But here again, Jessica ploughed ahead. It looked like he would have preferred not to tell us his age if given the choice. That was probably because he thought we'd look down on him for it. I remember that when I was around his age, I hated being asked how old I was by adults. I see. Sixteen, huh? That's got to be a delicate time. Which means I probably asked something I shouldn't have. <laughs> Jessica looked panicky for some reason. She seemed to think my impression of Canon was getting worse because of his refusal. Well, as a girl, Jessica probably couldn't understand the fretful male heart at this age. As his elder, even by just two years, I took it upon myself to be understanding of that. It looked like he was often warned about being unsociable. And apparently, he hadn't improved one bit. Goda-san kept his business smile, but let a small sigh of resignation escape. It looked like Kanon himself was uncomfortable with remaining silent here any longer. After another perfunctory bow, he turned around and started pushing the wheelbarrow again. Just then, the wheelbarrow suddenly wobbled and fell, scattering the load. I guess the wheelbarrow's single wheel got caught on a pebble and lost its balance. Goda seems very, very pushy towards Canon. I, in a slightly passive-aggressive way. Goda-san urged him to hurry in a quiet voice, as though hinting it was shameful for a servant to appear clumsy in front of guests. Kanonkun wordlessly reloaded the wheelbarrow with the fallen objects, as if to say that he understood quite well without being told. He seemed to be fine with the light-looking gardening tools, shovels and such, but he looked like he was having trouble getting his arms around and lifting up some sacks of fertilizer. No wonder he doesn't talk to anyone, they're all... kind of... slightly insulting him. With a smooth motion, Goda-san took the shovel that Jessica had picked up. Behind him, Kanonkun was having trouble with the sacks of fertilizer. Oh, good guy battler. I lifted up the other bags that had fallen. Of course they weren't light, but for me it was a piece of cake. Kanonkun looked at me, surprised. It was the face of someone who never would have expected to receive help from a guest. <laughs> Since Kanonkun looked like he hadn't yet gone through his growth spurt, he was stuck with a sort of weak body. This kind of weight might have been too much for him. <laughs> like all the guys are joining in. Obviously, George didn't want to be upstage by Battler. <laughs> 
Okay guys, that seems like a good point to end this video. Everybody still seems to be having a laugh at Battle's expense, even an episode on. If you guys have enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more. And until next time guys, goodbye!